So today's video was supposed to be about these. These are little fan controllers I made and are actually already available in my store. I made a fan controller that essentially you connect it to your motherboard on this side and to a fan on this side or multiple fans. And it modifies both the speed signal going and telling the fan how fast it should go. And it modifies the RPM signal that the fan sends back. The reason I made this was to enable a power supply to run fanless. The power supply uh, actually needed a fan to be present and it determined whether a fan was present by the detection of a certain minimum RPM value. I wanted the uh, power supply to run a bit quieter, so I removed the fan and improved the cooling passively. And uh, I still had to connect something to the fan connector, so I made this. I shot a whole bunch of uh, video of me showing the code that this runs because it's essentially just a microcontroller. Uh, I actually forgot to press record. I actually stopped recording the moment I was supposed to start. So uh, rookie mistake, that will come on Tuesday. Today, yeah, that's literally the only free spot on my bench. Uh, <laughs> I got two power adapters, two 5 volt adapters from another tweaker called Hans de Bruyne. And um, one of them is from China and one is a, a relatively reputable, well, not really super reputable, a trust power supply for a USB hub. And uh, we're gonna test these and see which one is better. This one came from AliExpress. So here's the trust power supply. Um, where's my poker? It's uh, quite obviously kind of cheap. So the the pins, uh, they are molded in, but they're only molded in very thinly. You can see that they, they're they only in for like half a centimeter or something. Uh, so this is often a problem with uh, power supplies. These pins, they can bend quite easily and they can actually uh, snap off. Uh, they're also soldered onto the pins. I guess I guess it's okay. Uh, so what we're seeing here is a, um, a bridge rectifier. We see a neon tube uh, as if might actually be a proper fuse. Glass fuse. Yeah, I guess I guess it is a glass fuse. Um, there's no EMI input filter whatsoever. Uh, they do have, I guess this is an input inrush current limiter. Got a big cap, which is a WKXC, which is a brand I've never heard of. 400 volts, 10 microfarads, 105C rated, so it's actually 60C rated because it's a crappy brand. Well, we do see two transistors and they are, yeah, they are actually transistors. So I think this is a proper sort of kind of feedback situation. Uh, so with a lot of really cheap power supplies, you see a um, blocking oscillator, which is a type of self-resonating topology, which is, all right, but it has some downsides, like it's not quite stable at uh, low and very high load, so you get lots of ripple, and possibly you get quite large voltage deviations. Um, but this, it has a uh, an optocoupler, although I looked at it before, there seems to be a Zener diode and two resistors here, uh, but just a Zener diode as a reference, Zener diodes are very noisy. So I do expect a lot of noise on the output here. Uh, usually you want like a stabilized Zener reference and then an actual op amp behind that that does some bandpass filtering to get a good feedback. Uh, possibly, nah, here they have, they have a diode and a capacitor and then these two, there's nothing on the back. So these two, Transistors are probably working as a, an amplifier pair of our first order uh, feedback. Very simple, but at least it is feedback. 
And then we see a flyback diode, we see a uh, standard resistor, capacitor, diode, uh, RCD number. Uh, this, yeah, that feeds into there. Um, yeah, and then a coupling capacitor and output diode and output capacitor, which is also uh, some kind of crappy brand. Uh, so yeah, that's it pretty much. And here's the Chinese power supply. And right off the bat, we see some very weird stuff going on. This almost seems like a factory reject in, in some description maybe. Uh, so first of all, uh, same kind of deal here. Uh, the molding is defi definitely different. It's the same kind of deal uh, with the um, molded in contacts that are soldered on, but they are uh, much more sloppily soldered. Like this, this wire is only hanging by uh, on one or two connections. This will definitely rip over the lifetime. This is not safe. And on the other side, it's like, so this is weird, right? This is a UL listed PCB and it looks good. Yeah, so the UL listing goes to Dongguan Daisun um, PCB company. Uh, that's a good PCB manufacturer. They they do um, power supplies for Delta, for instance. And I'm pretty sure this is this is something like a reject or a, a refurbished. Uh, power supply because the date code is 1148 48th week of 2011 Nobody makes a piece of electronics and then sells it five years later or four years later, I guess uh, This wire this was This was this way when I got it like the wire is perched precariously over thin pins uh, so yeah, and obviously there has been rework because this this was not supposed to be like this. Ah, I thought this was weird. Look, this is what happened. They took the PCB from another power supply, probably a reasonable quality power supply. They snipped it off. They got it out of another power supply and then soldered on their own wires. This is This is a repurposed PCB. This is refurbished or... Ah, this is this is horrible. This means that there was a defect with this power supply. For some reason, it didn't meet specs, and it was discarded and then resold. The controller is an LNK624, which is a brand name. Uh, I think it's uh, Power Integrations. This is a, an expensive chip. Uh, you don't expect this in uh, low-cost power supplies. And there are... This is a Suscon... Uh, capacitor just like a B brand capacitor those are decent quality caps to have so and of course there's there's the hot snot everywhere to make sure that nothing uh, breaks loose otherwise it's it's fairly unremarkable there's a fusible resistor as an input protection uh, which is actually used so that's good uh, bridge rectifier capacitor. They do have an LC, uh, so CLC uh, on the input, which is nice. This uh, helps a lot with EMI actually. It uh, isolates the high frequency part here from uh, the input so you don't kick as much uh, RF interference back onto the net. Weird. No, no, I, I know what's going on here. Uh, there isn't actually feedback from the secondary. Uh, they use as, uh, an auxiliary turn on the uh, transformer to do feedback. Uh, so that's, yeah, and then there's output diode and capacitor and that's it. All right, explosion test. See whether it explodes if I turn it on. Nope. Okay, we're actually going to uh, just see how well it performs until destruction. Uh, kind of interesting to see is that the voltage indeed on the um, this is the Chinese power supply the voltage is kind of going up and down 
Yeah, this is actually 25 hertz uh, that is aliasing. So uh, that's the problem. Anyway, let's see if we can increase the power a bit. 1.46 watts out and 2.2 watts going in. The only thing heating up on the thermograph is the diode, uh, which is to be expected. So we're at half rated power. Voltage is still 5.2 volts, which is fine. It is sagging a lot, but um, I've also connected it with different wires. So the actual voltage sag is not super indicative. Now things are definitely heating up more. I can see diode bridge that you can see on the right side of the thermograph. Seven watts. Let's see how it's gonna do thermally. Hmm. It's kind of struggling to get the higher power. Um, 7.16 watts. And the input is 10.1 watts. So it's pretty pretty bad efficiency, uh, and it, this is to be expected for a low voltage design that just has one output uh, diode, because that diode alone is gonna drop like 0 0.75 volts, uh, especially the kind of crappy diodes they put in. And that's that by itself is already more than 10% of your total power, so. Yeah, let me just reposition this we're not nearly at for full power and things are already getting up to 70 degrees. Uh, voltage is kind of sagging too, which is not a good si uh, sign. So let's just uh, go up. And let me just turn on the video in case something explodes. There we go. All right. Uh, let's go to full power and see when it blows up. So we do expect... Oh, actually, the more current we draw... Like, I'm... I'm putting more resistors on it. But it's, uh... It's not actually producing more power. So 7.7... .7 7.8 yeah 7.9 watts is the maximum we can uh, we can draw it's getting pretty warm now so it's uh, it's definitely not a uh, 2 amp power supply let me just see what happens when we really load it down yeah the input power is not going up it's actually also going down uh, it's 10. Point Six watts now. Yeah, the voltage just completely goes down to nothing. The current still goes up, but it's not more than 1.6 amps. Let's just see how far we can go. Yeah, now the current, yep, now it stops, goes into overload protection. It's um, it's in hiccup mode now, you can see, it's trying to start up. So if I uh, zero the load, we will probably see the five volts coming back. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it's, um, It's not going to explode on you, it's just going to short circuit and cause a fire. Explosion test. Nope, it comes up to a very nice 5.3 volts. Idle power is 0 0.6 volts, uh, 0, 0 0.6 watts. And well, let's just uh, go and test. Let's start at 2 watts. See what happens. 
Hey, you can see the um, output diode slowly heating up. Yeah, we're gonna go to five watts. Yeah, there we go. So at 5.2 watts output, we're having 7.2 watts input. Ooh, it's sagging a lot. 7.2 watts. Uh, still seeing like a, a good volt of uh, output ripple, which is uh, very bad. Uh, definitely if you're gonna use this to power uh, a USB device, or if you're gonna power uh, your uh, cell phone with this, you're gonna have problems with your touchscreen. So the output diode is now at 52 degrees and I kind of see the biggest problem with this power supply is its output capacitor is right next to that diode. So the output capacitor is not gonna last long. We're at 7.25 watts output and 10.4 watts input. Let's see how far it goes. Ooh. Voltage is kind of doing weird stuff. Output ripple is increasing a lot right now, so I'm gonna turn on the video in case something explodes. Wow, what did it do there? Did I? No, it's it's just it's just moving all over the place. It just power reduced for no reason. Nine watts, nine point two watts, nine point three watts. It is uh, holding its own. It's already uh, producing more power than the AliExpress one. Can we do a full two amps? Yes, we can. We're drawing two amps at 4.82 volts. 2.1 amps. Still under 10 watts because the voltage has sagged a lot. It's actually going down quite significantly. We're at 10.2 watts with 14.2 uh, watts input. I actually forgot to record the thermograph. Oh, well, it's on screen now. 12 watts output at 17. 2.8 amps. I'm impressed. 13 watts output, 99 degrees. At some point it has to fail, right? We're at three amps output. And it's not budging. 20 watts input. This is incredible, really. Let's just see how far it will go. Ah, okay, yeah. When we really start loading it, it just, uh, yeah, the output power goes down. So maximum output power is 14.25 watts at 4.25 volts. This is a good power supply, even though the uh, output diode is now at 116 degrees. Well, who would have thunk you get what you pay for? Uh, <laughs> actually, this is kind of a cool situation because this Trust uh, power supply, which is, Trust is not a good brand. It's like the cheapest brand you can get in the Netherlands. It performed very well, didn't explode, uh, output it like 30% more than its stated uh, rating. And it's also cheap. Uh, this one from AliExpress was a bit cheaper, but um, uh, refurbished, I should say. One amp power supply, uh, got very hot and didn't live up to its sticker specification. Uh, but much more importantly, it had dangerous leads they were just snipped off and could um, easily uh, short circuit and cause a fire because there was no fuse to protect. Definitely not recommended. This one though, I mean, even though 
it had a high rate of power. The efficiency of both power supplies is pretty poor, and um, it still has a lot of noise. Uh, neither of these are good enough for touchscreen devices. You'll have spurious uh, touches being detected or other problems uh, when you use this kind of power supply uh, to charge up your phone and use it at the same time. Cannot recommend either of them, but if you have to choose, choose Trust. Never thought I would say that. See, you design so power supplies and you want to be able to test whether they function correctly. Yeah, you need something to consistently draw a load from the power supply. So, for instance, you make a power supply that is uh, rated for 50 watts. Uh, you don't just want to be able 